The White House has inked its first significant trade deal. In this case, it's with South Korea. It's a one-on-one -on -one agreement that some say could represent a blueprint for other deals. Kayla Tausche reports from Washington for us tonight. President Trump notched a trade win, touting a new deal with South Korea to replace a six-year-old agreement he spent the last year criticizing. The deal we have with South Korea is a very one-sided deal. It's a deal that has to be changed. The goal, to lower the U.S. trade deficit with Korea, which stood at $10 billion in 2017. The bulk of the imbalance? Automobiles. U.S. car companies could only sell 25,000 cars each into Korea before, a limit they didn't come close to meeting. The New Deal doubles that limit, which Ambassador Robert Lighthizer says should spur more business. We think we're going to make real improvements. It's not going to go to 50,000 per manufacturer immediately, but I think it's going to get way above 25, and I think we're talking in the not-too-distant future about billions of dollars of additional sales. And I would say that, 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 that other countries do sell in there, and we have the kind of products that they'll buy. The White House says there are new cuts to regulation in Korea and a side deal combating currency manipulation, as well as new caps on how much steel Korea can send to the U.S. That's in place of recently announced tariffs. Despite being close allies, trade talks were contentious when they started, with President Trump surprising South Korea's new president by publicly slamming the deal during their first meeting. Our trade deficit with South Korea has increased by more than $11 billion. Not exactly a great deal. And then threatening to withdraw altogether. Today, Trump tweeting the two countries can now focus on their security relationship as a summit between the U.S. and North Korea nears. I think there's a political reason behind this as well. As, as President Trump thinks about his meeting with Kim Jong-un at the end of May and reflecting on what's just happened, this surprise visit by Kim to Beijing, South Korea and the United States could not afford to be in a trade fight with this big strategic event ahead of us. And I think that's probably another rationale for what happened over the last 24 hours. The White House says preparations are still underway for that meeting, with nothing set in stone. Meanwhile, another major trade event looms. That's the renegotiation of NAFTA. Foreign officials say the U.S. has not set the date of the next round of talks, which is supposed to take place in Washington in April. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Kayla Tausche at the White House.